This hourly segment is brought to you by the Alpha Wealth Group, bringing the trilogy of estate, tax, and investment planning together. Visit alphawealthgroup.com for a free report. This is Chicago's Morning Answer with Dan Proft and Amy Jacobson on AM560, The Answer. Top of the morning, Dan and Amy. Uh, we're still uh, assessing the Greta Thunberg fallout from her comments at that uh, UN summit last week. Now, an enterprising type online, and there are many, Aww. may have uh, an idea for a future career for Greta. Heavy metal? Yeah. Uh-huh. Listen to Greta Thunberg, speed medalist. I mean, she could be like the next Lita Ford. What's your message to world leaders today? <laughs> Um, my message is that we will be watching you. Yeah. This is all well. I should be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet, you are going to us young people. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams, my childhood, with your empty words, and yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering, people are dying, entire ecosystems are collapsing. We are the beginning of a mass extinction. No way to talk about is your money and the fairy tales of the eternal economic group. That's pretty good. That's pretty good wow. editing, and I could see that on a future Slayer or Godsmack album very easily. The family's such star chasers; they may bring her into that field. I uh, I do like it. Uh, speaking on the substance of what Greta Thunberg has to say, our friend Bjorn Lumberg over at the Copenhagen Consensus Center makes the point: uh, there's nothing uh, evil about the technological advancements that have lifted people out of poverty. Just a century ago, writes uh, Lumberg, life was backbreaking. Plentiful energy made better lives possible without having to spend hours collecting firewood, polluting your household with smoke, achieving heat, cold, transportation, light, food, and opportunities. Life expectancy doubled. Plentiful energy, mostly from fossil fuels, has lifted more than a billion people out of poverty in the past 25 years. That's not evil. It's quite the opposite, in fact. Ms. Thunberg believes that climate change means people are dying, but the fact is that weather-related disasters just a century ago killed a half a million people each year. Today, despite rising temperatures, but because of less poverty and more resilience, droughts, floods, hurricanes, and extreme temperatures kill just 20,000 people per year, a reduction of 95%. That's a morally commendable achievement. And this is the point that Ronald Bailey makes over reason as well in terms of one of the things that's happening is human beings getting better at the things we do is uh, reducing our uh, pollution quotient, essentially. There, there's no, we didn't make any huge trade-off between prosperity and planetary health. We just got better at doing the things we do, producing the energy needed to power our lives. For more on uh, this topic... We're pleased to be joined by Francis Menton, who is the Manhattan Contrarian. Francis, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, And feel free to sing along with uh, Greta Thunberg's speed medalist, as as we did. But uh, you uh, write about uh, the climate strikers of last week, uh, led by Greta Thunberg, but not limited to her. Um, Your your reaction to uh, this debate that, of course, the Greta Thunbergs and others want to end. I just think they're completely unhinged. They they seem to have no uh, contact with the reality that I know. I, d- I don't know how Greta Thunberg could have made it to 16 years old and not realize she's one of the most privileged people who ever lived on the planet. Um, and instead of which, she is uh, claiming that her childhood is being stolen from her and, uh, and she's going to starve and die somehow or go extinct uh, because the temperature 
might go up a degree or two according to somebody's unverified pr- projection. Incredible to me. And and it's, it's the thing that uh, both Bailey and Lumber get to as well. So, you know, but part of it is just assessing the evidence. You know, which sector does a better job of improving lives and reducing the cost for those improvements? Is it the private sector? Is it through innovation that we're lifting people out of poverty and improving lives? Or is it through government diktats? Yes, I'm not going to struggle with that question for a long time. (laughs) But, right, all of the improvements come from the private sector. The government is a consumer of the wealth generated by the private sector. It's not not a uh, a generator of wealth, and it's not a generator of innovation and, uh, and life improvements. But why would the UN allow children and or you know teenagers to address them and other world leaders? It just seems really it, to me it seems like we're giving them too much power. Well, not only giving them too much power, but it really um, uh, misusing children. I mean, I, the the word abuse comes to my mind, yeah. right? Abusing children. Certainly manipulation uh, for, but, but of course they have great emotional uh, power, and so that's, yes, exactly. that, that's why they're used, right? Of course. <clears throat> exactly. Uh, speaking of children, uh, how about uh, Joe Biden's kid, uh, Hunter? You uh, wrote an interesting piece at your blog, again, ManhattanContrarian.com, uh, with a little bit of a federal local comparison, and we could do a, some of these local comparisons in Chicago like you've done in New York with corrupt politicians, but... Uh, tell us uh, why you chose to juxtapose Dean Skelos and Joe Biden. Sure. I don't know if your listeners, uh, how many of them would know Dean Skelos, but he was the uh, majority leader of the New York State Senate, and he recently started uh, a Republican, by the way. Okay. Uh, you might be surprised to hear that the New York State Senate was controlled by the Republicans for a long period of time until just uh, this year. Uh, and Skelos was the majority leader, but he just began serving a prison term. The The allegation against him was um, that he misused his office to direct uh, jobs to his son, Adam. They're, they're jobs that didn't pay much money, they're like entry-level jobs. Maybe the total amount was $50,000 a year for four or five years. Uh, but the Fed, the federal prosecutors got employers who employed the son, who, by the way, appears to have been a jerk and didn't show up for work much, but they got the employers to say that uh, that they felt pressured to employ the son. They thought they would lose influence if they didn't employ the son. Uh, uh, well, it seems like very analogous to the Joe Biden situation, doesn't it? Uh, they didn't the indictment doesn't say anything specific that Dean Skelos ever said to these people. Uh, it's just that they felt pressured to employ the son. Well, did Burisma or, or uh, in the case of Hunter Biden or Hill International, in the case of James Biden, which is Joe Biden's brother, feel pressured somehow or think they were getting influenced by employing the son or the brother? So a very analogous situation, but Dean Skelos is in jail. Yeah. Uh, and, and the coverage of this has been uh, something to watch, too. I'm sure if you compare the local media coverage of Dean Skelos in New York to the uh, same outlets covering Joe Biden, there would be a, an op-ed there as well. But I, I just want to go to some New York Times reporting. Joe Biden's presidential campaign urged TV networks to keep Mr. Giuliani off the air because of what it called misleading comments about the Biden family in Ukraine. Mr. Giuliani has alleged that Mr. Biden intervened in Ukraine to assist his son's business interests. No evidence has surfaced to support those claims. I mean, it's just that's a that's a remarkable uh, statement to make. Joe Biden. And this is goes back to 2014. Jonathan Carl asking Jay Carney about Joe Biden's uh, inner inner session into Ukraine. But whatever Joe Biden did or didn't do, it was inherently a conflict of interest. And that seems to me what's being papered over by all of the. Uh, Trump was digging for dirt and there's no evidence to support the claims. And he was investigated by Ukrainian prosecutors and there was no criminal wrongdoing founding. It's the conflict of interest that is the fundamental problem. And then you investigate from there, isn't it? Well, you know, I uh, am now retired from my longtime job, but my longtime job was litigation lawyer. And I 
if there's one thing I actually have some expertise in in the world, it's what constitutes evidence. Uh, I'm always amazed when people say there's no evidence, there's no evidence. Circumstantial evidence, absolute evidence. And is there circumstantial evidence in the case of Joe Biden that of certainly of a conflict of interest, let alone circumstantial evidence that might be of an underlying crime? Yes, there's overwhelming circumstantial evidence. Now, would you prosecute a crime based on only the circumstantial evidence uh, that's out there? I, I doubt you would. But that is, certainly does not mean there's no evidence. There's lots of evidence. Yeah, well, exactly. And, 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 you, and when you have a conflict of interest uh, as, the, as the sort of uh, blinking light, then you follow it, don't you? Well, in the case of, uh, in the case of Dean Skelos, they uh, put a team of federal prosecutors on it, and they wired up everybody he was talking to for a, for a, a year or two, and so forth. Uh, if you if you want to know if there's uh, that kind of evidence, that's what you do. In the case of Joe Biden, nobody's done that. Mm-hmm. Well, and let's talk about the whistleblower rules and how they changed, you know, pretty recently, so that you don't have to be uh, the one witnessing. You could have it could be hearsay. Um, Are you familiar with that? Because President Trump. Yes, I am familiar with that, (laughs) and it's extremely suspicious. I've I've seen uh, I've I've seen reports that the that the personal knowledge requirement for a whistleblower report changed two days before this whistleblower report uh, was made. That relates to the Trump uh, telephone call with uh, President Zelensky of of Ukraine. Um, yeah, and President Trump well, just tweet, you know, President Trump in all capitals, who changed the longstanding whistleblower rules just before submittal of the fake whistleblower report? Drain the swamp. It, isn't it incredible that the president of the United States can't find out the answer to that question? Yeah. I know. You want to talk about circumstantial evidence? How about circumstantial, circumstantial evidence of a fifth column action in the intelligence community from about November uh, what was it, 8th of 2016 to present? Uh, there, there's a lot more than just circumstantial evidence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, okay. Yeah. But there's also a lot of circumstantial evidence. He is Francis Menton. He's the Manhattan Contrarian, manhattancontrarian.com. Francis Menton, thanks so much for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. And he joined us on our turnkey.pro answer line. The more I read about this, no, I don't think he was doing something terrible in Ukraine, but it's just so, why can't politicians tell their kids, get a job? It's too swampy. Get a job. His kid was paid $600,000 because his name is Biden by a gas company in Ukraine, this super corrupt country that just had a revolution to get rid of corruption. It just looks bad. You've made the switch. And it feels so good. You've switched to Chicago's Morning Answer on AM560, The Answer.